Hello, hope you're having a great day. Now today is Monday and I wasn't actually gonna put a video out on this channel today because I didn't film anything yesterday for this channel. But I thought I'd make this video now to tell you exactly what did happen yesterday or should I say what happened the night before last. And this is gonna be another episode in the saga of our issues with our neighbors upstairs or one of them in particular. Now, for those that haven't watched the other videos where I've mentioned this, I'll just give you a brief backstory, as well as mentioning a couple of things I don't think I have already mentioned on this channel. So upstairs, we've got three people living in the flat. We've got a lady who works every day as a teacher. Then we've got her child, who she had as a son, but has now decided to live as a woman. And also living up there is that child's partner, who is also someone who's deciding to live as a woman instead of a man. And it's that partner that we have the main issue with. Now, they're an alcoholic. They drink every day. We've got a camera on our front door. So I see them, you know, putting the empty drink bottles in the recycling bin every day. I also see them hiding it underneath the cardboard in that bin. So they're obviously hiding how bad their problem is from the other two that they live with. And although they get everything delivered there, you know, none of them drive or anything. Um, the lady does cycle to work. They get everything delivered, you know, their takeaway meals, their shopping, but the lady's child's partner goes down the road about three or four times every day, um, I can only assume, to go and get alcohol from the off license. They go out with a rucksack on and you can clearly see that it's empty and then when they come back, it's uh, got quite a lot of stuff in there. So the lady's child's partner is an alcoholic. Now, this particular person likes to talk in a really fake female voice. Um, now, I know it's a fake voice because they don't use that voice when, for instance, the other day they answered the door to the gas man. They just had a normal, slightly feminine um, voice, you know, but it wasn't this loud, put on almost pantomime female sounding voice, which is what we have to put up with every day. It's loud enough that we hear it over our TV unless we have the TV up really loud. We've actually purchased these speakers to put on our TV just so we haven't got this sort of drone in the background, you know. I can even hear it when I've got my earphones on when I'm trying to edit my videos here at home. It's just a really unnecessarily loud pathetic, in my opinion, uh, fake female voice, which actually makes them sound more male because it's like a, a pantomime voice, you know? So that's our issue. The other issue is that, you know, late at night when this person, you know, decides to stay up later than we do, we can hear this pathetic fake voice in our bedroom when we're trying to sleep. And, you know, I listen to podcasts when I go to bed, you know, as a way of getting more knowledge in, but also a way to drown out that noise, but then sometimes it's just louder than I have my phone um, playing the podcast. And then obviously if I turn the phone up louder to drown out that voice, then the phone keeps me awake. So yeah, it's really stressful that, you know, a lot of the time, I in particular, I'm thankful that I'm the one that has problems with sleeping more than my girlfriend cat. You know, I have an issue where I can't sleep because the alcoholic upstairs with a fake voice um, is talking too loud. Now we have, confronted them, you know, both by knocking on the door and by banging on the ceiling. And they like to call the police and play the transphobia card. So, you know, we've been accused of transphobia, etc., etc. I've had the police knock on the door and I spoke to them at the window. I won't let the police in unless I got a warrant. But then they basically told me that if I didn't give them my name and my details, that they were going to kick the door in. Like, it's ridiculous. When we all know that you know, the police haven't got time to come and see you when there's a crime getting committed. But, you know, if you upset a transgender person, oh, they're straight round and they're going to kick your door in. So, you know, this is something that's going on constantly in my life. You know, it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not a major thing. It's just a challenge. Yeah. And the way I live my life nowadays, I face challenges. It doesn't matter. It's not going to prevent me from turning myself into the strongest person that I can physically, mentally, and spiritually. It's not going to stop me from inspiring other people to live healthier lives. You know, and when I look at this person upstairs, every time I see them, they just look like more and more of a state, you know, and, you know, part of me feels sorry for them. You know, they're obviously an addict. I'm an addict. I understand exactly 
you know, what's going on. And it's sad to see, but it's also sad to have to put up with it. And look, I understand as well, as an addict, you know, you are selfish. That person is selfish. You know, whenever we have confronted them, and as I say, I'm going to take you back and mention a couple of confrontations that I haven't mentioned on the channel before. They are just inherently selfish, you know, banging on about how hard their life is and how, how many problems they've got and this and that. And um, yeah, it's all very familiar to me, you know, with me being an addict myself. But um, yeah, it's just something we shouldn't have to put up with. I mean, at the end of the day, live your life however you want, man. Be an alcoholic, like be a transgender, do what you want. Like all they would have to do is to not talk in this pathetic fake voice, which doesn't make them sound like a woman anyway, and then all would be great. But then, you know, the whole sort of, Know, selfishness thing why should they not speak in this loud voice you know so anyway so a couple of weeks ago it was the day after they called the police on us last it was the day after the police threatened to kick our door in etc etc and bearing in mind as well the police every time they tell us that we, we we shouldn't even like knock on their door we shouldn't you know we should just tell the council and all this like well we all know that's not going to do anything you know what i mean like if, if neighbors being noisy you knock on the door and you ask them to keep it down, like regardless of what the police say. So anyway, the day after the police um, came around the last time, I basically confronted the two upstairs, you know, the, the one with a loud voice and the other one. They'd just come back from the off license. The uh, woman's child was still in their pajamas, like, you know, looking at a right state. And the, the other one, the one that I say is the alcoholic, um, was looking very down. And I just confronted them, like, you know, and we had quite a long conversation. I've actually got it recorded. Um, we had a quite long conversation where the person was going into the, about their problems and how they've got manic depression and all this and that and this and that and how, you know, they have to speak to people in America like late at night and that's why they talk really loud late at night. And, you know, I just, you know, kept calm and I just said, look, at the end of the day, if I can hear you in my bedroom over my phone, then you are talking too loud. And, you know, they seem to get it. You know, they seem to agree with me. Then I sort of explained how it seems to us that, you know, whenever we like dare to complain, you call the police. And this person actually admitted that that was wrong and apologized for calling the police. Like, so somewhere in there, like they know that they're taking the piss, you know? You know, after that, it seemed to get a bit better. Like they, they agreed they were gonna set alarms and make sure that they weren't loud after 11 o'clock and stuff like this. And, you know, it was all good. Like, you know, like they asked me for a hug at the end of the conversation. I just said, look, you know, I'll shake your hand. Like, I'm very English like that. Like, I'm sorry. Like, just cause you choose to be a woman, you, <laughs> I don't cuddle men. Like, I'll shake your hand, you know what I mean? So, so they all went well. And then, you know, they seemed to like keep their noise down like after 11, still having to listen to it all day, like over my headphones and stuff like while I'm editing and that. But, you know, you kind of can't really tell people to shut up during the day, can you? Like you should be able to ask them to, but you know, when you're dealing with like morons, you know, it's fine. So, you know, most of the time it seemed like at night they weren't being loud. We was able to sleep. That's great. But then it just seems like when the lady, the lady who's the teacher, goes away for the weekend, like her boyfriend or whatever doesn't live there, so obviously now and again he stays here and now and again she stays there, but yeah, it just seems like when she stays away for the weekend, then they just, they're just loud all night again, you know? And, you know, again, we've like banged on the ceiling, like, and it doesn't do anything, like, it just makes them louder, like, they know that they can just call the police, like, at, at, at any time, and, you know, but at least it was only, you know, once every couple of weekends when the woman um, goes away. But anyway, the other day, I did actually confront this this loud one. And I just said, look, man, like polite request, yeah? I'm still able to hear you like all day, every day, like, you know, over my telly, over my headphones. Like, if you could just try and talk a bit quieter. And they were like, yeah, sure, like, sorry. like, And then they even knocked on the door half hour later with a note which they handed to my girlfriend, Kat, and then she sort of came in and showed it to me. I was working on a MacBook at the time, so I didn't read it fully, but it was something along the lines of, oh, yeah, thanks for being polite about it, blah, blah, blah. We'll keep our noise down, whatever, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, great, whatever. Like, And to be fair, that was about three, four days ago. Um, and since then, they've been louder during the day. Like, And again, it's not like banging loud. It's not like they're playing music and stuff like that, but I've noticed, you know, that... The, the voice has just been talking louder and I can hear it more. It's almost as if they think that once they've sort of responded in some way, it like gives them a green light to then not even think about it. You know, like they're more worried about responding to the request than they are 
doing anything about it. But anyway, like it is what it is, you know, I'm getting on with my life, like it's fine. Then Saturday night. So bearing in mind yesterday, we had to get up at 4.30 a.m. because I had to meet up with some guys to go to a car show. Now that's work for me. I was going to the car show to make a video. You know, I'm going there to meet up with subscribers. So it's work, you know, so essentially I had to be up at 4.30 in the morning to go to work. And at like 12 midnight, I can still hear their voice or whatever. And I put my podcast on, I'm trying to go to sleep and I've, and I've left it and left it and tried to as best I can to go to sleep. And then it got to like nearer 1 a.m. And I thought, right, I'm gonna knock on the ceiling. Like, you know, this is ridiculous. So I banged on the ceiling and I was polite. I wasn't angry. I said, look, I've got work at 4.30 a.m. Can you please keep the noise down? I can hear you in my bedroom. Lo and behold, the noise got louder, you know, and then there's banging around. This is another thing they do as well. Like when you complain, they'll just start banging doors and drawers and, and I can hear the noise of what to me sounds clearly to be like a wine bottle or, or, or an alcohol bottle, a glass bottle slamming down on a, on a table or the floor. So, you know, left it a bit longer, a bit longer. Then I knocked on the ceiling and I was a bit more angry. I was like, look, you know, I've got to get up for work at half four. You know what I mean? Like, please keep your noise down. Again, it got louder. They actually shouted back at me like and said something or other. Then it got louder and louder. And then eventually, about 2 a.m., they must have like gone to bed or, or whatever. And it got quieter and I was able to go to sleep. So then I had two and a half hours sleep and I got up the next day. You know, I still got up. You know, I'm not going to let them stop me doing what I'm doing. But I got up and I was obviously very tired. In terms of my daily routine, now when I have to get up like super early like that, I obviously don't go through my whole daily routine. But... I was able to write in my journal. I was able to have a quick 10 minute meditation session and I banged out some push ups and I had a cold shower and we had a breakfast. I had poached eggs on toast. So that was pretty good, you know, so didn't let the tiredness hold me back there. But um, I've got to the point now where it's like, I don't want to allow these morons to be on my mind all the time. You know, I want to try and like accept it and stay present and not wake up every day and start you know, allow my mind to drag me back into the, the past of when they've been loud or drag me into a potential future of when they're going to be loud, you know, and, and wind myself up. You know, these are things that I preach on this channel, you know, stand in the present moment, not allowing your mind to draw you away from, you know, the present moment, etc. But, you know, this is something that I'm having to deal with on a daily basis. Like, and, you know, I stress it's not that bad. Like, it could be worse. There's people out there that have to deal with, like, loud music and sort of abusive neighbours and, and stuff. So, you know, I'm grateful that it's not that bad, but it is just so avoidable. Like, it's so avoidable. Like, there's no need for someone in their own flat to be talking so loud that, you know, we can hear it down here and we can't sleep, you know. I mean, now I'm I'm talking quite loudly to the camera now and... I'm sure they can't hear me. Um, but I certainly wouldn't even be talking this loud, even to my girlfriend late at night, just out of courtesy, you know? It's, it's just not what you do. But, you know, again, alcoholics are selfish. So I'm dealing with that. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make them see sense. Like, they don't care. Like, they care a little bit when they're sober and you sort of spring yourself on them and confront them. Like, but really, they're just trying to get out of the confrontation and then go back indoors and get drunk again. Like... They don't care. They really don't care. So, you know, I'm in a position where, you know, I'm trying to accept it. I'm trying to not do battle with these idiots above us. But, you know, I do have to work here every day. I do have to edit my videos every day and I have to hear their drone all day, every day. Like, And then when they're sort of preventing us sleeping as well, it's like it's, it's a step too far. And then on the other hand, like because they're transgender, that's the agenda of the day. You can't say anything to them. Because the authorities and the system is geared up to protect these poor transgender people at all costs. You know, even when they are, you know, they admitted that they were sorry that they called the police. So that means that deep down they know they shouldn't have called the police. You know, they're wasting the police's time lying to the police, <laughs> knocking on the door and knocking on the ceiling, asking your neighbour to keep it down isn't uh, tran transphobia. Um, so yeah, it's it's a difficult one and. To be honest, my mind now is telling me that I should resort to basically every opportunity I get making this loser aware of how much of a loser they are, you know? Obviously, I'd have to be careful about the language I use and stuff, and it's not really a road I want to go down because I don't want to be putting fuel on the fire of the negative side of my brain. Bear in mind that we've got a camera on our front door that um, sends 
a notification to our phone every time someone triggers the sensor. So that's how, you know, I see this alcoholic like hide in the bottles underneath the cardboard in the recycling bin. That's how I know that they're making a, a two minute trip down the road to the shop. I can see them walking to the shop, um, you know, three or four times a day. Like they're not smokers, so they're not going to like buy cigarettes or whatever. Like I don't think they would be going to buy drugs like three or four times a day. Like, um, I can only assume that, you know, they're buying alcohol, given that the rucksack clearly looks empty when they go and then it clearly looks full when they come back. Like, you know, I'm guessing they're going down the road to buy alcohol because um, they're an alcoholic. So yeah, you know, I've got to the point now where I think every time the sensor tells me that they've gone out, like I'll just wait at the door five minutes and then when they come back, just start telling them how stronger I'm getting day by day. Um, being now 200 and whatever it is days clean from drink and drugs and how much more of a state they look every time I see them. Today, I sort of went into them a bit and, you know, started calling them a selfish, pathetic alcoholic and uh, asked them what they were doing today. Going in and getting drunk all day again, are you? And they said, no, I'm working. Like, bullshit. Um, I mean, if they were working from home, then surely they would uh, be able to understand that I also work from home and they might be a bit more sympathetic to me not being able to work because I can hear their voice. Um, so yeah, I did go into them a little bit today, called them a loser, and you know, I've got to the point where it's like, what else can I do? Like, you know, And I know like a lot of you guys have suggested in the comments before some quite um, interesting methods of dealing with this, but you know, regardless of you know whether we think they're male or female, like I'm not into violence and stuff like that. You know, although I accept that that is sometimes a method of nipping stuff like this in the bud, you know? I grew up on a council estate, and if you are the kind of person that keeps your neighbours awake all the time, then you kind of do expect to have something happen to you at some point, you know? But I'm not that way inclined, luckily for them. But, you know, as I say, that negative side of my brain is sort of telling me that maybe I just need to go out there every day. Every time I see them go up and down to the off-license, just go out there and tell them how much of a state they look and uh, explain how proud of myself I am that I'm no longer in that state where I'm drinking every day. But, you know, I, I accept it's not really the right way to deal with it. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of backed into a corner. But, you know, I'm interested to hear what you guys would do in this situation. Feel free to put them down in the comments. But, yeah, other than that, you know, I did go to the car show yesterday. Um, I was really tired, but it was great, you know, catching up with friends that I've got in the car scene and, uh, you know, meeting loads of people for the first time that watch my videos. You know, I had a lot of positivity coming my way about my videos. You know, a couple of people talking about this side of my uh, YouTube um, as well, you know, with the on-track videos. So, yeah, it was a really good day, but, you know, I did lose sleep. And yesterday afternoon, I was absolutely knackered. I ended up having a couple of hours nap here on the sofa and um, I went to bed quite early, but then, you know, inevitably end up getting up late this morning. And it's meant that um, now I'm late getting on with my work today as well. But, um, but there will be another video on this channel tomorrow talking you through today. But as I say, I wasn't planning on putting a video out today, but, you know, seeing as what happened, I thought I may as well uh, <laughs> upload another instalment of our saga with our alcoholic neighbor. But, um, I'm definitely not going to let it stop me growing and stop me getting stronger and stronger day by day. And um, yeah, I hope that they manage to overcome their addiction as well, because not only is it going to mean that I'm going to be able to sleep better, but um, it's going to be better for them as well. But uh, yeah, as always, massive thanks to everyone who's got this far, especially as this video has been a bit of a rant. Feel free to say hello in the comments and we'll have a chat or contact me directly through Facebook, Instagram or email. But other than that, I'll chat to you tomorrow.